Hello, dear friends. Today in the Alatra TV studio we'll talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, we receive a lot of questions from people who are interested in how people lived six or more thousand years ago, before the time of the Sumerians. This is also the time of Hyperborea, just right after Atlantis. I mean, how people recovered and what the society was like. Because today there are many examples that society lived without wars, without armed conflicts, without exploitation of some people by others, without poverty. I mean, people indeed lived very peacefully and happily. Yes, at first it was almost an ideal society, then it was what we now call the creative society. Of course it's interesting, but I have a question for our friends, since they are interested in it. A simple example, guys. What will the knowledge of how someone lived give you? How will it help you? And how will it affect the lives of your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on? It won't. Why should we live for the past? Let's build the future. What is actually more important? Really, what is more important? Will we waste time? Will we talk about how someone lived at one time? Or will we do today that which will give us life tomorrow? Why should we, let's say, discuss how they once lived in the creative society, if we can build it now? What's better? Well, in my opinion, actually, as you wish, if you want, we'll talk, no problem. But what will be the efficacy of our conversation? Will we satisfy people's curiosity? They'll forget about this in a day. It will not change their lives in any way. Well, it's true. How will it change your lives, my friends? It won't. But we can change lives, and we can make the world a better place. Isn't that right? Let's go back to the video, the truth and the chaff, because we have revealed the basic laws there. The formation of an image, our attention, the power of our attention, and its investment, where we invest it, is what we implement. Yes, we are now divided. Well, this is how the system works, that we should all live, as they say, by our ideas, by our images, and without unity. That's why, as you have noticed, we have already lived like animals for six thousand years, from the time of the Sumerians to the present day. 
but we can change everything. And we can even build an ideal society, not to mention the creative one, is that right? Let's just talk about this. Well, it's more useful. Frankly speaking, I was actually preparing for the program in a historical context, about how it was and how people lived back then. Therefore, but what you are saying is really correct. I now understand that the vector of our conversation is already changing in a slightly different direction, towards the future. What is more valuable? Because I agree with you that, indeed, there is no use in the past. No use at all. The past is already gone, and now we will be talking about something that doesn't exist. Or are we going to talk about what might be? It depends on us whether it will happen or not. What is better? Okay, well, then I have the eight foundations of the creative society. There you go. Igor Mikhailovich, before we proceed to the eight foundations, I would like to find out the following. What is actually the creative society? How do you envision it? I mean, who is this society focused on? On a person. The creative society, in my opinion, of course, there are as many opinions as there are people, but again, the creative society is simple. It's very comfortable and convenient for a person. Why? Because it is focused on a person's benefits and freedoms. And that's the entire meaning of the creative society. There are no lies there, no deception, and most importantly, there is no power, because a person has all the power. There is no superstructure over him. That's the point. Just look at the number of wars, revolutions, all kinds of human revolts that we have, right? And we always look for what? Why do we take sides against each other? in search of happiness, in search of an ideal society and freedom. Freedom and everything else, yet what are we building? The same. They say you can't kill the dragon. By the same methods. When you defeat the dragon, you become the dragon yourself. Why? A simple question. Because the consumerist format itself dictates this scenario, right? For example, people make a revolution, they strive for the best and the nation rises. The same tyrants come to power, who again manipulate us, in just the same way, and we get nothing. Why? Because that's the law of the consumerist order. It will remain exactly as it was set up to be, because we remain divided. We have our own interests, and most importantly, we live by the law of beasts, right? I mean, we treat each other just like beasts. Although we have laws set out, the UN and other organizations create them, and they declare how we should live. But all these declarations do not work. Why? Because the consumerist format dominates. In other words, the inhuman format of relationship of one person towards another. Can this be changed? Easily, my friends. It all depends on us. And again, what do we return to? To the integrity of our attention, where all of us together invest it. If we want to live well, if we want to live worthy of a human being, then we should invest our attention precisely in this. That is, our time and our efforts in building the future for ourselves and, let's say, for our children and descendants. If we approach this from the perspective of the present day, then it is actually very easy to build a creative society. I'll put it this way. If we really want this, and everyone who has understood the entire meaning and essence of the creative society that we are going to talk about now, then it's realistic to build it within ten years. Ten years. Great. And we will live in this creative society. But again, it depends on people, on their desires and aspirations. If we do nothing and set our hopes on someone else that someone will do this, it won't be built. Because the creative society is precisely the task of all people. It's not just a task of, for example, some idea-driven fellows who are supposed to do something for someone, but it's a task of each and every one of us. It is our task, right? Yes. Exactly that's the point. Then all together we will do it. There will still be sociopaths, I mean, well, enemies of humanity, who will stand in the way of the creative society. Why? First of all, it will be a collapse of their plans for building their own empire for their reign and of people serving them as slaves. Well, there are such sick people. There are even non-humans. You can't call them people. If a person stands against humankind to please his personal ambitions and desires, he loses the status of a human. 
He's not a human anymore, he's a beast. He is already as dangerous as, pardon me, a sick animal. For example, a mad dog. Is it useful or dangerous for humanity? Can it be released where there are people? For example, people are relaxing in the park. Of course not. And we release a sick, unhealthy animal, such as a Doberman or a Bull Terrier, infected with rabies in the stage of aggression, and we release it. Is that a good deed or a bad one? A bad one, of course. And what should be done? Naturally, it should be isolated, of course. So that it doesn't harm people, is that right? It is. So, anyone who opposes the creative society, that is, directly opposes a human being, is he any different from this sick animal? Just be honest. That's worth thinking about, right? Mm -hmm. After all, no normal sane person would ever oppose the creative society. Why? Let us explain. What is creative society? Like you said, it existed as long as 6,000 years ago. Well, let's say it ceased to exist 6,000 years ago. We won't go back to that. We've already talked about that, how it was, what happened, and why an ideal society transformed into a creative one, such a degradation process occurred, and then the creative society turned into such a consumerist format, where a man is a wolf to a man. We've already told you about that. Let's talk about what the creative society actually is today. It is what all people want. We've been conducting a lot of surveys for several years all over the world, and all people openly say the same thing, that they want to live in peace, that they want to live in love, mutual respect and freedom. They don't want any superstructures that control them. What do we mean by these superstructures? It's when a small group of people, let's say, usurps all the rights and benefits of the entire humanity or of those people who elected them. So, this unwillingness to live in a consumerist format is manifested in their desire to live in freedom as one family. What is implied here? What does freedom mean? Because freedom is, say, let's look at history. As of today, everyone is fighting for freedom, for some rights and freedoms. What rights and freedoms do people fight for, in fact? Precisely for the creative society, where everyone is equal and free, where there is no crime. What does it mean, there is no crime? A good question, right? There is no crime where there are no conditions for it to exist. And the very first condition for the crime itself is, excuse me, a human need. It pushes a human to take the wrong path, right? Well, when a human lives comfortably, when he has everything, when social security is guaranteed to him, then he faces a choice to commit a crime or not to commit it. He has everything, he's fine. Why would he commit a crime to lose those benefits that he has? And one of the foundations, let's put it this way, or what the Creative Society provides is exactly the satisfaction of all human needs, right? I mean, it's housing, excuse me, it's social security provided for a person, it is high-quality medicine, it's education, the right to work, and everything in the world, if he wants that. But here's also a small point, and now we have touched upon the right to work. What if a person doesn't want to work? He still has to be provided for in the creative society. Let's say he should have an apartment. He must be provided for so that he's fed, has shoes and clothes. Medicine must be guaranteed to him and everything in the world. There shouldn't be such a thing that he owes anybody anything. Or, excuse me, they'll cut power for non-payment. Or will create condition when he has to commit a crime to survive. Right? This is not needed. Many will say, people will stop working, right? No, my friends, they will not. The very building of the creative society takes away the unnecessary. Why is it said there, four hours a day, four days a week, is enough for a person to stay at work so that they can live a beautiful life? I mean, he will live a normal life by the right of birth. Society must already provide everything for him, let's say, 
But if he wants to live much better and to live a beautiful life, he should go and work. Again, it's clear that for some work people get paid more, for other one less. Well, it's the right of a person, he chooses for himself. Nobody eliminates private business either, right? Within moderate, reasonable limits, let's put it this way. Well, I guess we'll also talk about this. But just for understanding, if a person wants to live a better life, he can literally do it by, say, spending four hours a day, four times a week, going to work, creating something, selling something, say, building something, is more than enough for a person to live a wonderful life. I mean, the salary should be high. They say, but where will it come from? Guys, just don't pay those who don't do anything. You can't even imagine how many people are actually getting a free ride right now. You know, there is an expression, one person digs while seven people sit on his shovel and are watching him. Well, it is really so. Alas. And whatever we take, starting with education, with science, almost any profession, well, everywhere and all around, there are a lot of people who just get paid without contributing anything useful. Well, that's true. And again, the distribution of funds or wages, well, it's absolutely unfair today. Let's take a simple example. There's a business and there's a business owner. Obviously, he has set it up and the like. He provides people with a salary, an opportunity to earn money. But in a percentage terms, how much does the owner get and how much is paid to the person? Well, these are simple examples, right? Yes. In addition, the prime cost and many other things. Well, economists will figure this out, let's not get into economics now, but if everything is actually arranged honestly and in the right way, a huge amount of money is freed up. And it appears that a person doesn't need to work eight or even more hours in order to earn much more than he earns now. That's true. It all was calculated. Again, it didn't just appear out of nowhere. Well, a similar Yes. Society has existed. It was a safe society as well. Of course. Again, now you have mentioned safety. Tell me, isn't it wonderful when you drive up to a store, get out of the car, leave the keys inside the car, and your purse with the money is left in the car. You took just enough to go in and buy a bun. You go in, buy a bun, you come back, and everything stands and lies in their places. Because no one will even think of taking something that doesn't belong to them. Isn't it wonderful, let's say, to sleep with the door unlocked, right? Let's say, neither the apartment nor the house is locked. You don't need a lot of alarms, nobody will come to you and steal anything from you or do any harm. Is it bad to have such a free and safe world? Or is a human being unworthy of that kind of a world? I think he is worthy. He is worthy. Can't we do that? Yes, we can. And again, a lot of people will say, what about criminals? After all, there are sick people. It is clear that there should be a service that monitors, let's say, the purity of morals and safety. But it should be a single service that is responsible for human safety entirely. Just like we have the Ministry of Emergency Situations today, right? One service should be dealing with any kinds of threats and any dangers, but it should be one service all over the world. Modern technical means, among other things, enable us to make the world absolutely safe, because crime will not remain unpunished. Excuse me, if you know in advance that if you commit a crime, you'll be punished, well, somehow you don't want to commit it anymore, especially if you live well and you're not in need, right? I mean, everything is very simple. In addition, there won't be those who are interested in supporting and creating crime. And here's a very interesting point. Few people have thought about it, but, let's say, the system itself is built in such a way that, I'll put it simply, if there are police, there must be crime. The police were created to fight crime. Let's say, if there's a bee garden and there is a beekeeper, then bees must make honey, right? Similarly, crime itself generates a whole system of fighting against it and controlling it. 
Millions and millions of people around the world are engaged in this system, yet crime has existed and it will continue to exist. Why? Because the conditions are being created for it to exist. If we remove the crime, where will these millions of people go? Well, everyone perfectly understands that. But can we overcome crime easily? We can. It's easy. After all, we are all human. And if we consider those very criminals, in fact, they are… well, I'm not talking about those people who are indeed sick, who can't really be called humans, they are beasts. But for the most part, those who commit a crime, they are forced to commit it. However, these people are risk-takers, right? They risk their lives, they risk their health. Yes, they go against the human being, they go, let's say, and commit illegal acts, but at the same time, they're predisposed to take the risk. Right. Thrill-seekers, so to speak. Thrill-seekers. Exactly. So, won't such people find a job in a creative society that is connected with the risk, where they can show themselves? and earn much more than they steal. And they will live a much better and safer life than they do now, when they steal and commit crimes. But most importantly, if today a criminal lives and they spit on his back, and that's, well, a criminal is a criminal, right? But on the other hand, if this person works for the benefit of humanity in the creative society, then, excuse me, everyone will thank him and praise him. Isn't that nice? Yes, he'll be treated with great respect. Simply. Just tell me, my friends, what is more pleasant for you, when they spit on your back or when they give you flowers? Here's a simple suggestion. Isn't that so? And at the same time, you earn more and earn honestly, you sleep well, and your friends and relatives look at you with pride. Right? Great. Well, isn't it better? Everything's possible. Everything can be done and everything can be changed, and it's all in people's hands. It's an excellent alternative. If there is a will. Exactly. Naturally. Basically, it's all mentioned in the eight foundations of the creative society. You mentioned that you have them. I do. Let's explain what the creative society is, just by going through these foundations. Let's do it. The first foundation, Igor Mikhailovich, is human life. Human life is the highest value, life of any human has to be protected as one's own. The goal of society is to ensure and guarantee the value of each human's life. There is not and never can there be anything else more valuable than a human's life. If one human is valuable, then all people are valuable. Isn't that right? And now, let's have a look at the very first foundation, human life, there's nothing greater than that. And now, let's analyze why in our consumerist format today, everything's exactly the opposite. Now look, the interests of society prevail over the interests of a human, the interests of the state prevail over the interests of a human being. Excuse me, my friends, I just don't understand. Yes, I understand and I know everything, but… But on the other hand, I don't understand. How a society can exist without a human? How a state can exist without a human? In fact, so what is the most valuable that can be here, on this earth? A human being and his life, of course. Human life is the most valuable. This is what we need to protect. There is nothing more valuable and cannot be, isn't that so? It is. But here, there are also guarantees of human life, right? as well as providing for a person when we as a whole society take care of human life. Everything follows from here, medicine, education and all social security, for example. A lot of benefits with a focus on a human being. And how is the creative society different from, let's say, a consumer society? The consumer society is oriented at lies, deceit, manipulation and hidden slavery. And everyone is in slavery, even those who think that they rule the world. They are in slavery to the system itself. They're not free. Whereas here there is freedom. Freedom indeed, excuse me. Just imagine an oligarch who can walk around the market and buy groceries without 20 people guarding him because nobody needs anything from him. People only come up to him and say thank you. Thank you for doing so much for society. Well, isn't that nice? He comes up and people tell him, look, good man, why do you take those bananas? Take this ones. You're a good person. I'm giving you the best. Keep them as a gift because you've done so much good. Will it be pleasant for a person or not? Super. Of course. Right? Or, as it is now, he's walking and he has 20 security guards because every other person wants to kill him, because he has robbed everyone he could. Well, isn't it so? It is. He has put himself in a prison and he's bragging about it. Are they happy with life? No, they're not. They're only happy with the fact that someone is jealous of them. Mm -hmm. Is there really jealousy? Only fools are jealous of them. Those who don't know how they live. 
Igor Mikhailovich. Speaking about the value of life, the creative society is an absolutely peaceful society. Absolutely. A society without wars, because nowadays… There cannot be a notion of war in the creative society. What is war? No matter what anyone says, war is actually the greed of one person. It's a sick sociopath, full of gluttony and pridefulness. The one who starts a war. And everything else are excuses. These are fairy tales for people. He needs what doesn't belong to him. That's why he starts a war. Because he wants to take what doesn't belong to him. That's it. He wants to plunder, rob the people. He wants to conquer them and make them his slaves. Let's take a look at history. After all, the modern history of the consumerist world. And look, what was 6,000 years ago? Yes, and more. Almost everything is erased, yes? Right, absolutely nothing is left. History starts later. Very little can be found. And when does the whole history start? Just with the construction of a consumerist format. Yes. When a man became a wolf to another man, when a human started dominating over another, a feudal lord appeared and a slave appeared. A slave. Right? And that's where history started from. Who is best known, so to say, in our history? Well, yes. Six sociopaths. In fact, beasts, not people. Do we have history about people? We have history about beasts, who gobbled whom up, how many people were destroyed and the like. So is that our history? And are we proud of that? Is that our past and is it worth remembering? It's better to forget it and never recall it. Well, it should be remembered. Everything should be remembered, my friends so as not to be like in the past and not to let it happen in the future. That is why the notion of war cannot exist at all in the creative society, because, again, the value of human life is above all, right? Well, isn't it so? It is. And again, look, one king wants to take something from another king, but the notion that one king wants to take something from another king It means that there are no people and no human being at all, right? It is all biomass, slaves. One king just sends his slaves to conquer the slaves and property of another king. To implement his interests. But who are these slaves? These are people. This is you and me. And we are manipulated by someone's sick psyche, someone's greed. Well, isn't it so? Absolutely right, yes. Yet, in a good, normal and human way, I'm not even talking about the creative society. This is how it would be. One king has some claims against another one. They come out together and they fight with each other, while we, the people, from one and the other side, make bets. We could even make money on this show, right? A great scenario. A great one. I think that's how it should be. Yes. And who does it depend on? On people. When the king tells you, go to war, why should you go to war and kill someone, my friend? Here's the king who's pushing you to war. Take him and push him ahead of you. Well, right. That's right. What is a king? He's nobody without his retinue. Just a sick animal that pushes people to war. What should be done? Push the animal ahead of you. People push it from one side, and the others push it from the other side. And that's it. Here's the show. Have fun. Will the war stop? They'll stop. Well, it's a joke, of course. But in the creative society, this is unrealistic. Why? Because all power belongs to people. Because all humanity is one big family. Of course. Why fight in a family when they are all relatives and close ones? Well, right. Yes, just you know, it's bizarre to hear that in society there are actually such thoughts that supposedly war is a natural state, referring to that very Plato who told… I just wanted to say, well, all those Platos, Kants… Yes, all philosophers, that's why… Yes, 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 philosophers, based on whose works. Again, the justification for the slave-owning system was created. Well, isn't it so? It is. There are those through whose mouth, let's say, people, those who ruled other people, tried to justify their governing, their cruelty and inhumanity. That's why they publicized them. That same Plato is being studied everywhere to this day, right? Right. That very… Kant. Machiavelli. Hobbes. Kant, Hobbes, yes, and everyone else. Why? Because they are exactly teaching the consumerist format. They say that a human without a war, it is unrealistic. That a human has to fight anyway. A human shouldn't fight. That's the first thing. Because there is nothing more valuable than human life. It's easy to take it away, but it's impossible to give it back. Isn't that so? Well, how would you go against God? 
After all, they don't mention that they will have to answer for that. How to live with that, yes. Well, monetary joys are much more valuable. Later. Will be later, after all, and we don't know whether it will come. But now, yes, I have sent a bunch of slaves and they brought me something on a platter. A human should simply be a human, not a slave. Stop doing silly things and everything will change. Exactly, Igor Mikhailovich, the second foundation of the creative society, the human freedom. Every human is born with the right to be a human being. All people are born free and equal. Everyone has the right to choose. There can be no one and nothing on earth above a human, his freedom and rights. The implementation of human rights and freedoms must not violate the rights and freedoms of others. Of course, I think it's all said here. Explicity. And again, I would like to repeat that all these foundations are the result of the aspirations and desires of all people, of all healthy society, say, of our planet Earth, right? And, Igor Mikhailovich, the right to be a human. Those who may be watching us for the first time, what can they say? That, yes, we are all people, basically, born on Earth, and we have… We are all endowed with… Everyone is born human. We are all human beings, right? Of course, yes. And what does it mean in the creative society? Why do we stop being human? And again, what is the status of a human, right? It's the highest status, for which all the benefits, and say, all the freedoms exist, yet, Can a human deprive himself of this status easily? Again, by committing an unlawful act or infringing on another person's rights and freedoms or benefits of another person. After all, will a normal person encroach on another person? He won't. Who will encroach? The beast. If a human becomes a beast, he stops being a human, doesn't he? A human is dual, in fact. There are both an angel and a beast in him. I mean, there is something called human with a capital letter H, and there is that beast component which is mainly stimulated in the society as a whole now, and which dominates the, in the society as a whole, right? But in each of us there is also a human, or speaking religious terms, one who can become an angel, right? And the creative society is precisely the society of a human, not the society of a beast. And if a person somehow let's say, by virtue of some emotions, thoughts, something else, becomes a beast, then he is dangerous to society, he is dangerous to another person, and there is nothing more valuable than human life, right? But he loses this status by becoming a beast. And if he becomes a beast and loses his status of a human, then what should happen? Well, something befitting, he has to If it's either lose it temporarily, or if he's sick, let's say, he needs treatment, and if, excuse me, it's irreparable, it means irreparable. There's no other way. Society must be purified too. How can it be otherwise? And what does the status of the beast mean? Does it mean isolating the person or something temporary? It can mean anything. Let's say, any of your actions aimed against freedom, that is, against another person, It again deprives you of the status of a human, partially, temporarily or permanently, depending on the crime you committed. Right? Well, I'll give you a simple example. It will be clear to everyone, and a lot of people will say, how can it be so? Let's say there's a traffic light. A red light is on, traffic is not permitted. Who among us drivers hasn't broken this rule? And why do we break it? Because the maximum we face is a traffic ticket. But we ourselves create very dangerous conditions by running the red light, even when we are sure that there is no one and we will make it through. So why there are fatal accidents? Because there are such thoughts as, we'll slip through. But we didn't, a person got hurt. Sorry, that's the grossest violation, right? It's already a very serious, wrongful act. I understand there are accidents that don't depend on people. Well. Things happen, equipment fails or something else. But when we deliberately run a red light, we get a traffic ticket. Well, if one has money, it's no problem at all. Is that really a punishment? Will it really stop a human? Well, right. And it turns out, from the perspective of the creative society, you lower your status of a human by posing a threat, a possible threat to other people, right? You infringe on their freedom, right? on their health, 
So what kind of punishment should be? One, that you won't pay off so easily. Well, at least hundred hours of community service. Why did you do that? Usually to show others how cool you are, to boast, and to tame the beast's pridefulness. Here are hundred hours, let's say, of socially useful work. And in the place where everyone sees you, this can be, excuse me, cleaning of public toilets, for example, in supermarkets or somewhere else, cleaning of the territory, the roadway, where you have broken the rule, so that everyone could see you for hundred hours that you work off, say, two or three hours a day in your spare time. Will you break it afterwards? No, of course not. Will any of your acquaintances do this? Well, for example, I broke the rules and I do the washing, cleaning in public places. You've seen me. Will you break the rules? You'll stop and think about it. Of course not. Of course, this is an example, yes. This is such an extremely difficult example, right? Yes. So there will be perfect order, because all traffic rules are written with the human blood, and we ignore them, because we are often too self-confident. But often we are the cause of death of other people, isn't that so? Or, for example, there is a drunk man behind the wheel. He understands that his reactions are slow yet, but he's a hero. And if he got behind the wheel and caused an accident, and he took a life of another person, is there an excuse for him or not? After all, this is a deliberate action. What does it mean? It means that the beast dominates him so much that he loses his status. He is dangerous to society. Therefore, by taking away someone else's life, he must lose his own. It is obvious, well, it's not necessary to take a person's life. What for? In this case, he must work to the end of his days, bring benefit to all of humanity and work off his bestial act which he committed, but he will lose his status of a human. In my opinion, this is fair and right. These, of course, are questions for lawyers. They will define, tell and do everything. Everything should be handled by specialists. But for us to have order, for us to be free, we must be honest and righteous, right? Not break the rules. Not create threats to someone, then no one will threaten you either, right? Then you calmly drive up to the store, and you can leave the car open with the keys inside and no one will take it, because they know if they take what is not theirs, they will lose everything. And this is inevitable. And modern technology allows you to do this, both surveillance and everything else. And again, every person will be interested in a safe and honest world. Therefore, it makes no sense to break the laws. Now in the consumerist format, when everyone breaks every rule, this is a natural process of some kind. Well, as it were, man is a wolf to a man, therefore the beast dominates. And there should be no such thing in the creative society. And there should not even be a reason for this, because a human must be provided with everything. He does not need to break the rules and does not need, say, to encroach on what doesn't belong to him. And what does it mean that nothing can be above a human? And here again is what we were talking about. How can some kind of public or state interest, or some other far-fetched interest, be above a human, if a human is the highest status? And what is society? We've already looked into it today. Isn't that a human? Yes. Isn't the state a human? Well, there are different opinions that, yes. Well, there are different opinions, yes. But in reality, if we remove a human… In reality, of course. What remains? Nothing. So what is higher? Yes. A human. And there can be nothing above a human. Therefore, it must be fundamental, and everything that is, let's say, created and outlined in the legislative framework should be oriented towards freedom and the benefits of a human in every aspect. Let's give a simple example. Now we have a consumerist format. It's encapsulated, it's a closed system which is oriented from the outside to the inside. We have continuous confrontations, opposition. It is all, in fact, aimed at self-destruction. We see it, observe it, it is already, let's say, not secret information, and everything is heading this way. And what is the creative society? It is an open system, meaning when it goes from the inside to the outside, and that's where we get the multitude of freedoms, right? Meaning, on the contrary, to build life, to acquire health, human freedoms, his benefits, Everything is focused on his benefits. I mean, a human should live as well as possible. And everything that is done should be done in order to improve human life. It is human-oriented. Do we have this today? Are we now oriented in our consumerist format at giving benefits to a human? 
Is everything done to improve his life? No, everything is exactly the opposite. To rob, to slander, well, and everything else. To improve the life of a few, right? Allegedly to improve. After all, it is impossible to improve life, let's say, even for those who are at the head of corporations or something else, those who make people's lives worse. They do not improve their own lives. Well, how is it possible? No, they only make it worse for themselves. Well, these are the rules of the game, they say. Well, what kind of game rules are these? This is inhuman, this is a beastly existence, in fact. Well, isn't that so? It is. We spoil the environment, we spoil relationships, we fuel wars and the like. Yes, they fueled wars, it's beneficial to them. They made a profit on it, but what's next? Well, have they started living longer? Have they stopped getting sick? Have they become more beloved? Or what? Or have they earned something for themselves, I don't know, paradise or something else? Yes, they lived in the reflection of paradise here. Having created this illusion, let's say, in a home format with a bunch of guards, it's the same prison, a cage but a gold one. They isolated themselves. Yes, the only thing that they… Well, again, these are sick people, I tell you honestly, they are non-humans, who satisfy their megalomania with the fact that they can manipulate other people's destinies. But this is nonsense. Unfortunately, they often do this irresponsibly. But in the creative society this is impossible. Why? Because, for example, they say self-government, yes. And many people say self-government is dangerous. Well, how can you give self-government to a human? It is. Well, they give such negative examples and so forth. Self-government is wonderful. Some people say, how can the illiterate people, after all, they don't know what is needed. Guys, well, actually, how it is done now? Several hundred people sit in the parliaments and pass a lot of laws every day, right? In the creative society it is impossible. Why? There must be simple written truths. That's all. Again, people accept them at the referendum, and everything goes according to it. That is, it is a one-time thing, and then if something changes, modern technologies, these gadgets, allow the whole humankind to be connected. And since it concerns us, it concerns our rights, our benefits, so we ourselves are interested in such state of things when we ourselves take responsibility for any changes that concern our benefits, our life, that is, we vote for it. This is called self-government, basically. When we as a whole community decide if there should be something or not. And again, in creative society it must be clearly stated that it is allowed to improve, but it is not allowed to make human life worse. So this is the guideline that should stand. Well, if we've already touched upon that, let's talk about what should be. Let's talk about this foundation then. Again, here are the simplest truths. There shouldn't be any inflation, there shouldn't be any crisis, there shouldn't be, let's say, any difference in prices, anywhere for the same products or goods, right? That is, everything should be equal all over the world. The same pay anywhere in the world for the same job or the same profession, right? Yes. There has to be equality. No labor migration either. Of course. For some, a question comes up. Well, they were also asking. They say, what about this? For example, one fruit that grows in Brazil should be shipped to a different continent. After all, this costs money. Guys, well, it's ridiculous when such illiterate questions are asked. It's called logistics. These fruits are sent from Brazil to another place in the world. At the same time, something else is sent from that same place to them. So it is coordinated through general logistics. This is economics, macroeconomics, which is calculated very easily. And it is all coordinated, and it all runs like clockwork. And there is no loss anywhere or anything. But there is a single, let's say, price policy, which does not allow you to raise the price. You can lower it while raising the quality. You cannot lower the quality. Here are simple truths aimed at human life. What do we have now? Let's just take pharmaceuticals. One and the same active substance, in some medicine, for instance, some pills. Ten thousand varieties of them are produced on the same base, and the price varies from pennies to thousands. Such a discrepancy in price policy, why is that? Well, it is because of a brand, a company and so on. However, it's not a fact that it works better. Often it works even worse than the one that costs pennies. Is it possible in the creative society? It's not possible. Why? Because such industries as pharmaceuticals, the resources have to be shared. 
I mean oil, gas and the like, they can't belong to someone. That very electricity, solar energy, rain, water, but no need to go far. In 1999, I think, water tax was introduced in Bolivia. Right. Why? People were not allowed to collect rainwater. Right, because under pressure from the World Bank, a law was passed that all water resources, including rain, belong to one… A corporation. One corporation. Not even to the state, but to the corporation. Exactly. The whole country, all Bolivia, all of its citizens have to pay tax to this corporation to buy… To buy a license for rainwater. For rain. Well, guys, we live in this society. Of course, it's clear that people rose up, and eventually the law had to be repealed. But how many billions did they make during that time? That's how it's done. A hundred people, or several hundred, pass a law, on which someone earns a lot of money, and someone loses a lot of money. Well, isn't that so? Well, yes, it's a crazy situation, you know. Is that it that crazy? Of course, it's already absurd. Look at what's going on. Aren't they selling air today? Well, yes, they sell it in cans. That's what I'm telling you. Right, fresh air in that very China on the internet. Fresh air. Well, fresh air is already on sale. There you go. It's humor. But behind this humor, there is again our cruel attitude towards each other. That very advertising that irresponsibly imposes something on us. Can false information be given to people in the creative society? No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not, because again, you're responsible for information you present if it possesses a threat, a lie or a deception. To the benefit of someone, mostly of one's own self, you're responsible for that, right? Right. And when there's natural control, you guarantee that you're selling something rubber and blue and we get something iron and black. Well, sorry, you're depriving yourself of the status of a human. It's all simple, right? You won't want to deceive anymore, no one else will. None of those who knew what happened to you because you took the path against a human, against humanity. It's simple. Let's consider what's going on today. We have touched upon advertising. But how does today's mass media work? It's total manipulation. It is. What's being imposed? Separation, disunion, violence. These are all those images that are being imposed on us, aren't they? These are the dominant images in our heads that create our mood, that unwittingly evoke emotions in us, whether we want it or not. We're shown a movie about a killer maniac and we start to sympathize with this image. Is that normal, my friends? That's how our consciousness works. Certainly, a part of the propaganda of the entire film industry. What about the inhuman relationships? That very film industry, as you say, that very news and everything else, complete negativity, sheer emotion, division is everywhere, disunion, and the propaganda of violence, not a propaganda of what is humane, but of a beast. Is that normal? Is it possible to remain a normal person in such an ideological environment? Absolutely. You know, values are shattered and people don't even understand what's good, what's bad. Of course. Gradually, it's already to such an extent. Of course. But can it be all adjusted? Easily. After all, it depends on us. Isn't it so? It is. And the media in the creative society. Again, in the creative society, the mass media should belong to society. To people. To people. It shouldn't be private. Yes, there could be some kind of portals, something else. People should have the freedom to create something. Why? Because again, there will be a difference. Someone talks about one thing, someone about another, but it has to be directed at creation and unification. If, God forbid, someone starts talking about separation, then in whose interest will he do it? In the interest of people? In the interest of a human? Of course not. Once again, there is an insertion as in a consumer system. Someone's profit is behind all this, which means it is directed against the freedoms and benefits of a human. Again, it means that a person deprives himself of this status, that is, he must be stopped immediately. And a person being deprived of the status of a human must be held responsible for his action because he lied intentionally, he intentionally separated, he intentionally committed a crime against the whole humankind. Isn't that right? It is. Everything is simple. There are also questions that are asked both about economics and the media. Such a planned economy and the media that belongs to society, won't it affect diversity? That is, won't everything be made uniform, let's say so? Of course, it won't affect it. Again, we just talked about that very media. Someone specializes in humor, someone specializes in science and so on. 
After all, you can create a lot of positive and beautiful examples. You can promote goodness, love. They say it will be boring. It won't be boring. It will be interesting. It will be wonderful. And there will be a lot of variety. And again, as for planned economy, yes, when we… Again, what does planned mean? Economy that is planned. It is planned all over the world. We know how much is needed, let's say, of flour or wheat. How many bananas are needed for the whole world? How much is consumed where? It's easy. And everything is planned. We know where it grows well, where it can be ordered. And everything is supplied to the people. But nobody forbids us to create new, beautiful, interesting things. There's going to be private business after all, right? There will be competition anyway. But it must be clear, you can't raise the price and reduce the quality. You can lower the price by raising the quality. It'll only benefit us as people, isn't that right? It is. I mean anything to improve life, to improve the quality of our existence, to increase our benefits, it's all welcome. Everything else has to be denied and eliminated. Everything that's against us. Is it complicated? No. It's not difficult. On the contrary, it's wonderful. Again, they say, someone will be given power, someone will control. Friends, no one should be endowed with power in the creative society. The notion of power should be absent completely. And then this will be correct. Of course, there should be some managers, there should be responsible people, right? Who are coordinators of some actions. But these are just people who are hired. But they have to understand, if they are responsible for something public, they all have to be in the public eye. They, their relatives and everything else. And every penny has to be accounted for. Why? Because there shouldn't be any secret programs that exist right now. Well, we don't know what laws are passed, what goes where. Because there is such a label as top secret, classified and stuff like that. There shouldn't be. Every penny should be tracked. And any person should be able to see that by opening his gadget, all of this should be open and all activity should be visible. For example, a person is assigned to some responsible position where he does some kind of coordination work. But then this person, being subject to corruption, starts bringing in his friends and relatives, letting someone, some private company, make money. All this is immediately visible. Let's say modern possibilities, including electronic ones, allow us to track and see everything. Do you understand? I mean, any movement of money. And if a person is subject to some kind of corruption or work for someone receiving some benefit or profit, it must be stopped immediately. It is impossible. It can't happen in the creative society, because he immediately loses the status of a human. Why would a person do that? He isn't endowed with power, he is endowed with responsibility. And he must understand, once he's in, that means he agreed with the rules of the game. Yes, he must earn enough, but he must not commit crimes. Or let's take the medical field, the source subject. A lot of people say, well, now doctors in some countries make money, and how will it be then? And then they should earn not less than they do now, or even more. But they should be paid for the fact that people are healthy, and not because they perform, for example, unnecessary surgeries on them. Today, hundreds of thousands of major surgical operations are performed all over the world, absolutely without any indications for those surgeries. And they harm people, not benefit them. And everyone knows that. But why is that? There is insurance, there are expensive surgeries that are performed. Well, I've been working in vertebrology for, say, 30 years. I know this profession very well, and I saw a lot of surgeries that were performed absolutely against indications. I'll say even more, most of the surgical operations on the spine, with presence of hernia, degenerative changes and the like, sometimes with injuries, all that is done absolutely against indications. Why? It's expensive, interesting and profitable. That's horrible. This is a deliberate action of a doctor who begins to intimidate the patient, knowing full well that his intervention will only harm the patient instead of benefiting him. And this is also a problem. Is it possible in the creative society? It's impossible. Why? Because a doctor should be paid again for a person's health when he improves it, not worsens it. Right? Yes. Well, let's say, like a family doctor or a district doctor who is responsible for a certain region, a certain number of people, a therapist, for example. Mm -hmm. The more healthy people, the more he earns. 
Great. So what will he implement? Preventative measures. The more correct operations the surgeon has performed without harm, the more he has earned. But not when he drags everyone in to make money on each one. It shouldn't be this way. Everything can be calculated, it's simple. Well, such changes are very necessary. As for medicine, we know that right now the COVID-19 pandemic has shown a lot yes. about the state of medicine. This pandemic has shown right. all of the world's medicine, and unfortunately, is deplorable state around the world. Is it possible in the creative society? It's impossible. Why? Because any doctor understands that if he has come across something unknown, he should immediately consult with others. If they found that it is a dangerous virus, a new virus or something else, it would be localized immediately. It wouldn't start spreading. But even if some kind of spreading occurred, well, it happens, then it would be immediately localized anyway. Say, why is the COVID-19 epidemic so widespread now? Because we didn't follow and don't follow elementary rules of hygiene. Is it possible in the creative society? No. Why? Because right now, if you're without a mask, it's bravado, kind of a hero, without a mask. Pardon me, in the creative society, if you don't wear a mask and don't fulfill basic hygiene requirements, you can harm the health of another person, you are responsible for another person. Will you behave this way? Of course not. It's a threat to his life. You will put on three masks to make sure everything is good. Will this stop a pandemic? Easily. You see, the attitude towards the situation simply changes. And the hero is not the one who commits more crimes and acts against humanity as it is now. The hero should be the one who, on the contrary, acts for the benefit of people, the one who brings much more good than harm as it is now. Well, everything has to change. Again, science should work for whom? For a human. It must do everything to improve the quality of his life, to increase his benefits, the humans. And then this will be correct. Today they also complain that funding for the science industry is decreasing, although science should actually serve the quality of human life. As you say, for example, the increase in yield. I will put it simply. Today in science, I don't want to offend anyone, but I will tell the truth. A maximum, even less than, I'll say with such maximalism, a maximum of 2% of all people who are engaged in science, are really doing science. If we remove 98% of the rest, we won't lose anything. They only spend money, we will only win. Because there are so many idlers who do nothing and are engaged in plagiarism. And pardon me, literally, in foolishness. Excuse me for the expression, but you can't say otherwise. They are trying to somehow justify their actions. They create works that no one is looking at, that are useless and so on. What is science in the creative society, in my point of view, is when there is an efficiency coefficient of the scientist or researcher, right? Here he brings a contribution to the public money box. He improves the life of society. Quality. My benefits are improved, or the quality of my life is improved. That's it, well done. Then he should already have encouragement, a rank or something else depending on how much he has improved the life of society and of each person, he should get a corresponding rank. And not as it is now, when the ranks are distributed to each other, again, some kind of enclaves are created where somebody decides who should be there, what rank should be given to whom, etc. Everything is bought, sold. It's such nonsense. Well, really, everyone knows everything. This is science. Yes. We can even take big science. Let's take physics, for example, with this giant Hadron Collider, where they disperse particles, they research, they create, they are busy with big science. How many billions are invested there? Well, of course, a lot of funds. Yes. Enormous investments. Now, let's look at this story. Well, many notice this. Well, some actually… Well, it exists, and they are far from physics. But in reality, how did it happen? Just recently, before our eyes, they created this collider, hired a lot of people, built a whole city and so on, launched it, they were working and working, but there was no result, right? That's all, the money was gone and the funding was about to stop. What did they want to find? The Higgs boson? 
There was no boson, they couldn't find it. Well, that's it, the money is running out, the state is no longer financing it, and it's not interesting anymore. That's it. But during the last week they discovered the Higgs boson. Such a revolution. Well, right at the last moment. Like in a movie, doesn't it remind you of anything? When a nuclear bomb is stopped two seconds before an explosion. Same there, the funding is running out in a week, but today they discover. Well, at least Higgs was lucky, he lived to the moment when he was given a reward that he… they have finally found that particle. But did they really find that particle? Who cares? They just called a random particle that they saw. That's it, prove it, it didn't happen. And what's the use for humanity? How has it improved my life? A simple question, how has it affected the life quality of each of us? It has only improved the life quality of those who take part in these experiments and make money from it. We understand. But what about our social life? What kind of science is that? What they are doing, calculating, can actually be done on a tablet. Any student can calculate this, we showed it and talked about it a long time ago. And it was much more precise and important. Everything can be calculated. No, they must spend public money. And you say, it is not funded, the funding of science is decreasing. What kind of science? And again, in which area does science dominate now? In military industries, of course. Of course, where it is aimed at self-destruction. And if we put these forces in a useful direction? Oh yes, if we would only build as many cities as were destroyed during… In one of the videos, you and I were just talking about the fact that all these resources, scientific resources, I emphasize, are aimed at developing the means and opportunities to destroy each other. If we direct them, that is, direct their intellect to the development of Alatra physics, in order to put all the puzzles together, then we would actually have an ideal society. Isn't that so? It is. Such notions as financial resources, money, something else, would cease to exist by themselves, because all this can be created. Anything we take is the result of combining atoms, any atoms are particles and all the rest, correct? Mm -hmm. What are particles formed of? Of a wave. A wave is energy, energy is information. By controlling information you create everything you need. So that's where it came from, the one who owns the information… Owns the world. But its meaning was not just information in the sense of who, where, how, Mm -hmm. but in the literal sense of this word. Of the primordial physics. Igor Mikhailovich, there is also one point which I would like to voice in our video, when it is said that we should definitely satisfy the needs of people. They bring up the well-known experiment, Universe 25, the experiment with mice, under the loud headings that paradise conditions were created and suddenly life became how. This is the same as, excuse me, the book Utopia, isn't it? Well, they say, utopian society. This was an experiment that was set up with a certain deliberate and calculated Mm -hmm. conclusion. But people are not mice, that's first of all. Secondly, by creating normal conditions, normal and worthy of a human, we leave open the possibility for growth, plus the right ideology. Will a person behave like mouse, lying on a sofa, doing nothing and degrading A certain percentage of people certainly will. Isn't this percentage of people doing the same right now? Again, let's take any profession. Wherever we are, we'll always find these lazy bones who don't do anything, right? Everywhere and in all places, there are conformists. Such a person makes it look like he's working. But in fact, he's actually going to work for a salary, he's not interested in anything, he's spinning wheels. He doesn't bring benefit now, so he won't bring it later. But if we make an active lifestyle, an active, socially useful lifestyle, fashionable, everything will change. Isn't that so? Yes, it is. We need the right images, not those modern images that are imposed on us and are financed with our attention in the modern world, right? Mm -hmm. And we need the right images, positive ones. Right. Which improve the life of all humankind, which develop science from the inside out. It gives us the opportunity to exist broader, further, say, and in a more interesting way. 
Is that right? Great. And it doesn't narrow us down to the point of self-destruction. By the way, to confirm what you've said, that any experiments were created with a certain purpose. Of course. Then exactly in this experiment, Universe 25, the purpose was different. To understand how many prisoners can be gathered together in a cell in order not to have revolt. The critical point. Although when this information is presented to people, the fact that free space was limited is omitted. So they are manipulating it for another purpose, of course. Well, they are not talking about that. First of all, when people gather in one enclosed space, physiologically different people, who don't fit together and cannot interact, a priori, will there be order there? There won't be, right? Spiritual and moral values are very important. This is the basis. Definitely. But also other experiments were conducted when, excuse me, several people were absolutely isolated in one capsule from the outside world. And they felt normal, lived, and everything was peaceful and calm. Why? Well, it's space experiments when, with development, let's say, people have to fly to another planet, it should take a long time, it's outer space and so on. Again, the same outer space. How long people are in enclosed space? And it's okay. Great. So they are able. In fact, there are examples that people can interact and live peacefully. We can do it all. We can do it all, yes. But again, the creative society, first of all, is not an enclosed space. It is free. That's the point. Wonderful. It's great because I'm telling you, the creative society gives benefits. It makes people humans. What could be better? And who can stand in the way? Will a human stand in the way of the creative society? No, only a beast that can lose its power. Still, again with construction of the creative society, one will immediately see who is who. Of course. Where the beasts are and where the humans are. Already now you can see how the system is afraid of it. Today we touched upon the self-organization of people. And you can see how much the system wants to impose that self-organization equals… This is bad. Yes, anarchy, almost chaos, lawlessness. It can be chaos and it can be anarchy. Everything should be very simple and very easily organized. That is, it shouldn't be complicated. It has to be simplified. And everything which is complicated eventually breaks down, gets confused. When everything is simple, then it's all reliable and it works. Yes, at all times people have really wanted to build a society, a self-developing society, in which people would govern, let's say, this society by themselves. And today political science offers such a format as civil society. But civil society, according to those very Hobbes, Kant, Aristotle and Rousseau, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, cannot exist without such a superstructure as a state, which must control. How can it be otherwise? There must be those who control it. Relationships between people who are among themselves. Why? Because this whole gang, which you mentioned as the great philosophers of humankind, in quotation marks, so to say, they were precisely guided by the fact that all people are non-humans, they are sheep, and that there should be a shepherd who herds them. Do you understand? He shears, shaves and eats them. And he sated with that. Maybe it's enough for us to have shepherds, my friends. Let us be free people. Let us finally become the one who is called a human and face the truth. After all, we are all adults, we are all modern people, and we all understand everything very well. It's easy to build a society that will be self-governing. In their times, the times of these great philosophers, it was certainly impossible. Why? Because the disunity and vast distances that separated people did not give such a possibility. But now, with technological progress, we are all united. We can all simultaneously solve a lot of issues. So who's stopping us? Great. Everything is simple. So you don't have to rely on someone, you have to roll up your sleeves and forge ahead. And there will be everything, because everything is given to us. We have everything. Isn't that so? Yes, it is exactly right. Surely. Therefore, we should take care of our future, of the future of our next generations. And what is most important, make it so that these future generations will exist. Whereas if they will exist and it will be in the creative society, they will not say anything to us but gratitude, right? And not to make it, as it is in modern society, where there is a big question, will there be future generations at all? So we should face the truth and take a responsible approach to the present and even more so to the future. 
because our future, my friends, tomorrow will become our present. And today it depends on us what kind of present day there will be for us tomorrow, because today we can improve our tomorrow. That's how we should develop, and that's how we should live. This is exactly the meaning of the creative society, so that every day we work to make the next day better for all and for every person. Is that right? That's the meaning, the deepest meaning of the creative society. Only this way, by means of a creative society, can we get to building Eden, a truly ideal human society. However, that will be the future. Whereas this is already the creative society, this is already our present, that which is already being implemented. Igor Mikhailovich, people are very much inspired by what you say, and many say that it sounds so fantastic that it… It seems unrealistic. It seems impossible, even. I'll put it simply, if you sit and do nothing, it will remain fiction. But I heard every day in my time that it is impossible, it is fantastic, but I still did it every day. So I recommend it to you as well, my friends. For fiction to become a reality, you only have to work to make fiction a reality in your life. And then what is impossible becomes possible for all of us. What is impossible for one is possible for all of us together. Isn't that right? It just so happened, Igor Mikhailovich, that even if briefly, but we ran through… All foundations. All of our eight foundations. Well, I suggest, let's read it aloud, because we have only voiced two foundations to our friends. Read all of them aloud, and we will continue. Okay, thank you. Well, so that our friends have at least an idea of what eight foundations are, those ones who do not know. The third foundation of the Creative Society is human safety, which we were talking about. No one and nothing in society has the right to create threats to the life and freedom of a human. Every human is guaranteed guaranteed free provision of essential life necessities, including food, housing, medical care, education and full social security. Scientific, industrial and technological activities of the society should be aimed exclusively at improving the quality of human life. Well, we have already told about it. Absolutely. Guaranteed economic stability, no inflation in crisis, stable and same prices around the world, a single monetary unit, and the fixed minimal taxation or no tax. Yes, and here I would also like to note that banks should belong exclusively to society. There should be no private banks. Otherwise, there will be inflation, there will be crisis, and a lot of problems that we live with. So I will digress. Okay. Tell me, I am addressing my friends. Do you like it when things which you could buy for a certain amount of money, five years ago, now you can't buy for the same amount. It already costs a lot more. You don't like it. Do you like constant inflation, constant crisis, and the fact that the value of your savings is depreciating? That is, you have worked and worked, and someone deprived you of those funds and those opportunities, of those benefits that you yourself have saved. Is that fair? It's not fair. That is why there should be no private banks at all. Then everything will be stable. And there will be no inflation at all. What you have earned will be in your savings, right? Yes. But this is in addition to the fact that there is also social security and benefits that are already legally given to you, right? Is that bad? By the right of the status of a human. Of course, by the right of the status of a human. And then there are surpluses that you can accumulate for yourself, give to your children, grandchildren, etc. Is that bad? That's wonderful. But the most important thing, my friends, that we can do now and pass to our descendants is a happy, safe, beautiful future, where a human is a friend to a human. Right? Yes. Let's move on. Well, also one more point about human security. The security of human and society from any kind of threats is ensured by the unified global service that deals with emergency situations. Is what we have already said. Yes. The fourth foundation of the creative society is transparency and openness of information for all. 
Every human has the right to receive reliable information about the movement and distribution of public funds. Each human has access to information about the status of implementation of the society's decisions. The mass media belong exclusively to the society and reflect information truthfully, openly and honestly. That's right. Fifth Foundation – The Creative Ideology – One of my favorite ones. Ideology should be aimed at popularizing the best human qualities and stopping everything that is directed against a human. The main priority is the priority of humanity, high spiritual and moral aspirations of a human, humanness, virtue, mutual respect and strengthening of friendship, creating conditions for the development and education of a human with a capital H, cultivating moral values in each person and society, prohibition of propaganda of violence, condemnation and denunciation of any form of division, aggression and anti-humane manifestations. Sixth Foundation of the Creative Society development of personality. Every person in the creative society has the right to comprehensive development and personal fulfillment. Education should be free and equally accessible to all, creating conditions and expanding opportunities for a human to implement his or her creative abilities and talents. Seventh Foundation – Justice and Equality all natural resources belong to humans and are fairly distributed among all people. Monopolization of resources and their irrational use is prohibited. These resources are fairly distributed among the citizens of the entire Earth. A human is guaranteed employment if he or she so desires. Pay for an identical position, specialty or profession should be the same all over the world. Everyone has the right to private property and income, however, within the limits of the individual's capitalization amount set by the society. And the eighth foundation is self-governing society. The concept of power in the creative society is absent, since the responsibility for society as a whole, its development, living conditions and harmonious format lies with each human. Everyone has the right to participate in the management of the affairs of the creative society and in the adoption of laws that improve human life. The solution of socially important, socially significant and economic issues that affect the quality of a human's life is submitted for public discussions and voting, referendum. Well, in this case, an electronic referendum can be held within one day, say, very quickly and easily. When society is active, but how, they say, to make society active? These are the questions being raised now. Guys, there's no need to force anybody. It concerns our benefits, and we will do it, very conscientiously and diligently, because it concerns not only our benefits, but also the benefits of our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So everyone will be responsible, trust me. They say, well, how's that? A person doesn't have any expertise profession, anything else, how is he going to understand economics or something? Guys, it's very simple. I'll give you a simple example. They introduce a law suggesting that some group of products has to get more expensive, because someone wants to get rich on it. Isn't that how it is? Yes, it is. Not making things cheaper, but more expensive. And here we all go to say, excuse me, guys, who put forward this proposal? A normal person who cares for society, wouldn't do that. It could only be who? A human enemy. They can come up with a proposal like that only once. Next time, no one will put it forward. Or am I not right? I am. I mean, when everything is honest, open and really humane. While to propose laws that improve our lives. Yes, that's possible. And then we'll all pass them together. Because we'll see how our benefits are improving. But maybe again, Due to some situation to have a better tomorrow, today we have to be patient. This has to be substantiated and explained to everyone in an easily accessible way. People may agree to tighten the belt for a little bit, but a better tomorrow has to be guaranteed, right? Of course. Tell me, will someone not understand it when it concerns everyone? We'll all understand it. Igor Mikhailovich, surely what you have voiced, what the creative society looks like in your understanding, and what you have read in eight foundations is amazing. That's what people want. That's what all people truly want. Of they course. They want this very much, and I really want to live in such a society. A question arises, what are the steps to implement such a society then? What should be done? In order to do this? In order to implement this. In fact, there are two ways. 
At present, we can inform the entire population of the world, talk to everyone and gather all together, for example, on some platform and hold a referendum. The constitution of each country states that the supreme power belongs to the people, and when people want this, they can transform it all. However, this way is not quite right. Why? Because we will face, first of all, different divergencies, various confrontations and misunderstandings. Besides, such a drastic transition will cause chaos, and then we will have to do a lot of extremely hard work and coordination to accomplish this. That's not quite right. That's one point. The other point is that this way will take far too long. We won't make it within 10 years anyway. Well, we just won't, no matter how much we want that. On the one hand, it might seem it's easy. What's the problem to talk to everyone? Well, it only seems so. Actually, it is extremely difficult and problematic to talk to everyone, to come to an agreement, to convey, to convey, then to create this referendum, to vote, and so on. It's possible as an option, but the most appropriate way, in my opinion, is to act through politics, through the order that dominates today, right? Again, what does it mean through politics? We, as an electorate, we elect politicians. So we vote for those politicians who support and are willing to implement the creative society, right? And this includes, excuse me, both politicians and parties, and many, let's say, of those who will go into politics for the first time. If they support the creative society, it means that they are people whom we support and who we vote for, and they will promote this creative society, and they will implement it. Thus, everything accelerates and improves significantly. Why? If we take a single country, for example, any country, and the dominant party in it has come and taken power, but it is oriented at building the creative society. Will it be able to build a creative society in one particular country? It won't, because everyone around is still in consumers one, but they can already undertake and improve something. Isn't that right? That's right. At least, let's say, introduce these eight foundations into the constitutions, change the laws, make them more humane, oriented towards human benefit, towards a human being, this can already be done. And you can immediately see if they support the line that they have declared, or if they just took it as a tool to come to power and live in the old format again. Well, again, if they have come to seize power under the slogan of the Creative Society, the next time they'll be just kicked out. Moreover, later on, during the building of the Creative Society, they will answer to the society for restraining its development. Mm -hmm. After all, even in building the creative society, it is also an important moment. When we build it, when we do that, and we are doing what all people in this world want, humankind wants it, and it has to be done, and done by everyone to the best of their powers and ability. But if someone opposes, someone is against it, and only a beast, not a human, can oppose and be against it, then a record of these beasts must be kept. Why? Because in the future, when the creative society will be implemented, such a beast cannot be endowed with the right and status of a human being. Of course, afterwards, they as opportunists will all of a sudden start to understand and support everything. We have seen this yes. many times. When one order succeeded another, and so on, well, there is such a category of, let's say, non-humans. Traitors. Traitors. Right, they always betrayed everything just to fit in somewhere. Such things shouldn't happen in the creative society. That's why, if a person opposes the creative society, then he loses the status of a human being in the future as well. Right? Mm -hmm. Then everything will be right. If politicians have let their electorate down, if they do not carry this out, then not only will they lose their political status, they will lose their status of a human being in the future as well. However, people who will actually carry this out will come instead of them. Is that right? That's right. And when, for example, there are already several countries where representatives of people come to power, those who really strive, strive to build a creative society, rather than the appointees, of some clans, oligarchs, or someone else, who solely defend the interests of the animal nature in the human being, then such countries, where the truth, honesty and creation dominate, will create a certain enclave. It is then 
that a kind of an international coordination center can be built, precisely in terms of politics. Again, who should be a member of that international center for coordination of, let's say, political parties? Parties, right. Precisely the representatives and people from those parties whom the whole party trusts, who really burn with the idea of this created society, who defend it and live by this and understand what it is. So they should be delegated there as responsible ones. Then already, at the international level, when there are enough countries, it all begins to acquire a more correct form, and then coordination between countries starts already. And then it is possible to begin to estimate and calculate how it all should happen, so as not to cause any harm. I'll say it again, humanity doesn't need any more revolutions. Humanity needs an evolution. So we should switch to the creative format from our consumerist one, in the evolutionary way, the peaceful and the right one, without destroying and aggravating anything, but only by improving and building something new. And here, of course, the Central Committee should play the main role, experts in logistics, economics, and all the main fields should join it, in order to coordinate these activities, and then everything will happen smoothly, calmly, when all countries have made a certain decision, or, for example, when at least the majority of the leading countries make this decision, then we can transition smoothly. And then, when the creative society is built, in the majority of countries, the rest will also join in. Igor Mikhailovich, if a politician who, as it often happens, has made certain promises to society to fulfill the eight foundations of the creative society, to implement… But he doesn't fulfill them. But he doesn't fulfill them, let's say. Then the party must remove him and replace him with the next person. Well, that one… One must answer to society, both now and in the future. He deprives himself of the status of a human being. And if he, let's say, has such an authority in his party that the whole party supports him… It supports him, and it gets corrupt. That's what the Central International Committee is for, which can declare to all people in any country that this party is corrupt, they do not fulfill what they have declared, they do not adhere to the eight foundations, they are corrupt, they defend private interests, they oppose humanity as a whole. That's what the Central Committee is for. However, if a person has so much authority, and the conspiracy has developed to such an extent among the politicians, who started it all, even at the top, in the Central Committee, there is corruption in it. Then again, there is, let's say, something that controls the Central Committee as well. In this case, it may be the Alatra platform, because this Organization is outside of politics and outside of religion, and it unites the electorate from almost the entire world. That is, we get what they decide at this stage, right? Right, their decision. Right. Then we as a society can report this and simply change everything. It doesn't mean stopping and destroying this. No, it means replacing some people with some other ones. Anything can happen. People remain people. Many people got used to playing by these rules without understanding the responsibility before humanity. They might be playing to their own advantage, as they say. Well, I'll tell you, it's enough for one person to break the law, run a red light and clean the toilets for three months, and you won't break the rules anymore. But if a politician violates this word before humanity and becomes corrupt, the responsibility is much greater and more serious. No one will want that. What for? What's the point? Also, Igor Mikhailovich, we have repeatedly heard such questions that the idea of the creative society really inspires people and they say, but what exactly should I do? It's almost like what they should do physically. I don't know, for example, take a shower and dig. How to build it? I mean, there are such… How to build it? At this stage, right now, there should be an information wave. It is necessary to explain, communicate and talk to people. After all, politicians will do what the electorate wants, that is, what people want and demand. So people should start demanding this from their politicians. Those who disagree will leave, and those will come who will implement it. It's very simple, and here every person can do it. And paradoxically, I will give a simple example to date. Even a hobo, a homeless person, can he actually do anything? He can. You know, as it is often shown on TV, someone may have seen that. They walk around with various help me postures and the like. And if he rides on it, I support the Creative Society and puts a sign, this aid in the triangle, right? 
cool. Will he attract attention? Absolutely. He already becomes a source of information. On the other hand, why wouldn't a hobo support a creative society if he's guaranteed both housing and food? And he won't have to vagabond and live under a bridge. After all, not all of them, far from all, are alcoholics, drug addicts and the like. More often, they are destitute people who became marginalized in their old age due to illness or something else, who were deprived, deceived and robbed of everything. Right? Yes, there are a lot of deceived people, of course. A lot of them. And there are many decent and good people among them. Can they do something? Yes, they can. A simple example, a granny, who often sits on the bench near the entrance, well, who hasn't seen that? They say, well, what can she do? Yes, if this granny gets inspired and wants to help her grandchildren, her children, so that they can live happily, so that they live much better than she did, she can do a lot. Instead of just sitting and talking about who passed by and the like, she can tell people about the Creative Society, those people who, let's say, live in this house. A man comes along and she says, wait, come here, do you know anything about the Creative Society? I'll tell you about it now. And maybe among those people there will be someone who can convey this information to a greater number of people. That's how it works, how can it be otherwise? Any person can do it, regardless of the profession. It doesn't matter, if he trades in the market, he can put up a poster, I support a creative society. Will it attract attention? It will. He can provide a link to something, or, excuse me, give a business card or a brochure about the creative society. Will anyone find out about it? He will. The one who didn't know, right? But it unites all of us. The main thing that we must do now is to spread this information as much as possible, to spread it as actively as possible and to inform everyone, so that all people hear and know that it is possible to live in a different way. And look, humanity has no alternative today. And this is really so. They built communism, which was inevitably utopian to start with. Why did communism fail? A simple question. After all, they also declared everything for people and the like. They preserved power over people. They just could not overcome this desire to command and control. Right? Kind of a superstructure. This is the dirtiest essence of a human, to be a feudal lord over slaves, so they could not step over it. That's why it collapsed. They were building social democracy. After all, they also declared something, didn't they? But again, it came to the same. Why? Right, and capitalism. Power, dictatorship, they're the top, the rest are slaves. Capitalism. It seems that there are market relations, everything should be honest. But some are richer and they have more rights, while others are less rich and they have fewer rights. Again, separation and domination. Again, masters and slaves. But people are all equal before God, which means that we must be equal before each other. Isn't that so? That's the point. To live according to God's laws, not according to what people have written, but according to those that the Lord sent. Then everything will be right. Actually, today it is really felt that, indeed, the capitalism system is already failing and all this… Completely. It is very clearly visible from the protest movements around the world. It is failing. And the protest? Of course, why is there inflation and everything else, crises, wars? Well, this is all bestial order. This is a human against a human. Well, how can we live like that? A human must live for a human. We must live according to love and conscience. Then everything will be fine. But when we live like beasts, we are beasts. And this is the doomed path. Yes, the demand for change is felt very strongly from people around the world. People want this. And if they want this, then what is needed? A new alternative. If people want change, if people want to live decently, then they should live decently. But in order for us to do it, we should apply a little bit of effort. Right? Right. And as of today, I'll say, politicians are already supporting it, and in many countries it has already gone forward, and it will be really gaining momentum. Let's say, is it hard just to go and conduct social surveys among people? If there's a spare minute, you can go to people's houses and talk to people, communicate, explain. Well, some people are already doing that, and it brings good fruit. Right. And I remember you were also sharing about, tell me, why do you vote for a certain candidate? Of course. Because he supports the aid foundations. Of course. So people will be interested in what the aid foundations are about. What are the aid foundations and what are they for? Well, the most important thing is that we can really implement this. Well, what is necessary for that? 
to make an effort to really stop being enemies to each other and learn to love and respect each other. After all, we want to be respected and loved, don't we? We do. So let's love each other and let's respect each other. Let's stop being lazy and let's get up and go to a brighter future. But our goal is the ideal society. It is our goal as humanity. But in order to come to the ideal society, which sounds fantastic today, so we won't even voice it for now, we have to build a creative society, the one in which it is comfortable to live and in which you want to live, the society of people for people, where everything is aimed at a human. Is that right? All the benefits, all the freedoms belong to a human. Thank you very much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you very much for the depth of understanding and for the inspiration and determination to act towards building the creative society. We have to have truth, first and foremost. When we start calling things by their names, when we start taking action, everything will become possible. Well, excuse me, if we do nothing, nothing will change. Isn't it so? Sitting, wishing, doing nothing and waiting for someone to do it instead of you, Humans don't do that. Today's information and conversation is very valuable. I'm glad that it went this way. And God help us all to do our best to take advantage of this opportunity and unite, having forgotten about all the disagreements and to build… There are no disagreements at all. Bees have disagreements, humans have no disagreements. We just have to stop being beasts to each other. Everything that happened is behind us. It doesn't matter what happened, it matters what will happen. And that's what we have to strive for. Is that right? It is. For building something new something we won't be ashamed of before our descendants. What we will build is what they will live in. This is actually a real heritage that we can all create for our future generations. Thank you very much. We all people are worthy of another, different world, and it depends on us. Thank you very much. Of course they are worthy. Thank you very much. So, my friends, let's love each other. Thank you for being with us.